And thank you for watching Cigar Time. Did they watch We're back. Oh, I was, I was going to say. Life's too short the to end smoke of the show, cheap cigar. The no, that's the, the beginning of the show. Okay. Uh, <laughs> God. We're going to attempt to do Cigar Time show here, right for you folks. And we're very happy today to announce back after a year or so absence, not absence with him, <laughs> but absence from our show, is Tim Person. Thank you. Thank you guys for having Speech. me back on. Tim is the executive <laughs> with Altidus, uh of Key Accounts, the much larger accounts throughout the country, which we are honored to be one of, in some illustrious company. We won't mention the company, but uh, we're, we're very, very happy and pleased. Tim's an old friend. Tim always stops in and sees us. And, you know, he, he's a joy to deal with and, and, and represents his company very, very well. One of the old liners in the business. Yeah, no, that's uh, liner, timer. Yeah, going into my 22nd year with the company, so I've been wow. there for a while. Congratulations. Thank you. So you're, you're up there in the big money now. No. Not, <laughs> all right, if I had your money, I wouldn't be sitting next yeah, to you. Yeah, if I had my money, I wouldn't be sitting next to you if I had my money. It's all buried in the backyard and coffee can. If you had my money, you'd hang I'm yourself. Getting the uh, out of this is the manufacturer of some, some iconic lines. Iconic. That's what's good. I have to Tim, tell us some of these iconic lines. Tell us some of the iconic lines. Well, we our iconic lines, uh, most people know, are Mo Monte Cristo, uh, Romeo and Julieta, A. Chubman, uh, Trinidad, uh, Tiamo, Onyx, some of the older brands. We also have our Port Arniaga, um, Santa Damiano, which we used to make, which was a popular line in your stores years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're going to be discussing uh, the Vega Fina today, which is actually one of our world brands that we sell around the world. So, um, again, we have some... Great names, great brands. Uh, excuse me, to name a few other would be St. Louis Ray, uh, Hispert, um, Juan Lopez. Juan Lopez. Hey, Chapman. Yes, I did Chapman. So, again, and there's different varieties of these brands that we make, but again, the juggernauts are uh, Monte Cristo, Romeo, and H. Chapman. And if I recall, you are the largest in this country? Well, one or one A. We we yeah. are, we're in the top Close. top three, yeah. definitely. I would say, as far as far as production and selling within right. the United States, right. which means a lot. And plus, they have a worldwide presence by their corporate ownership. Uh, they also they uh, they also own fifty percent of the Cuban tobacco manufacturing. Get the hint, Cuban. Manufacturing. We want to stay real close to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Our, our parent company, as everyone, you know, most of the people in the yeah. industry know that you can look it up on Google, um, purchased part into a Banos back in uh, a late, late, late 90s, early yeah. 2000s, and uh, we, are, we do have a partnership with uh, the Cuban government to distribute outside of the United States. Yeah, except the United States. But hopefully one day that'll be changing. And as we've said on previous shows, there won't, will not be a flood of cigars initially by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, one day you'll all get to taste the legal version of a Cuban and cigar. And not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so don't come into the store tomorrow soon. and say, there do you have the Cubans soon. yet? The embargo, everybody. <laughs> Look at Paul, he got that in. <laughs> yeah, the United <laughs> States has, has re-engaged Cuba from a diplomatic standpoint, which opens a lot of doors, but the one door it does not open that I think most people are not aware of only Congress can lift the embargo on Cuba. Mm -hmm. Correct. And I don't believe that's going to happen anytime soon, especially with the people currently in running the Congress. So it'll happen one day. It's part of the whole scenario of commercial relations with the island of Cuba. Did you say and only Congress can lift the embargo? Only, yeah. Congress, yeah, only Congress can lift the embargo. embargo. I thought only Congress could put us to war, too, but that didn't seem to change anything. No, yeah, president, the president can do that for 90 days. Yeah. For a short term, but he can't lift the embargo, the trade embargo on Cuba. It just that's a, that's that's settled law. So we need a few more cigar smokers in the country. Yeah, vote oh. early, vote often. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not Chicago. Can we smoke now? I'm just Please. getting, I'm getting He's ready to say me. all that. Relax. When you smoke a cigar, you're supposed to relax, enjoy. Yeah, it. I want to relax. That's why I want to smoke the cigar. You, you have camaraderie. Or at least some people you know. Relaxing. See what We're happens when you ask to light up all your more. <laughs> 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 As we light our cigar, the lovely Miss T will tell us all about the Vega Fina White. That's funny. The Vega Fina White, the wrapper is in Ecuadorian Connecticut. The binder is Indonesian, so something a little different. And the filler is Colombian, Dominican, and Nicaraguan. We have three, excuse me, three, we have five sizes. Churchill, Corona, Robusto, Toro, and Torpedo. It's actually six sizes. It's number five. 
Oh that's, yeah, that little baby. That's right yeah, there. it's a little small guy. Um, kind of like a what's the what's? Folks, we can't invent this stuff at all. Corona. Petite, the, the corona. petite Corona. The Petite Corona. Thank you. And the taste profile is nuts, leather, and cedar. And for those of you that don't know, which is probably almost everybody except maybe Tim, Vega Fina as a brand has been one of the top two or three cigar brands in Europe for a long time. And although it's a little more recent that they've been available in the United States, Correct. Uh, it, it, as you mentioned, world brands, that is a, truly a world brand. Right. When we launched Vegafina back in the late 90s, originally it was made in uh, Honduras, and we brought it in the United States uh, late 1998, early beginning 1999. And uh, one of the objectives was to do was our parent company back then was uh, Tobacco Lara de España, so they launched it in Spain. They launched it in a few different varieties. So they made it, a, they tried to make a cigar that was complex with the different blends to compete with, of course, you know, the more flavorful Cubans. So at that time, um, you know, that was their objective, which they have achieved. It is probably one or one A, the number one selling cigar in Spain, France, and a few other countries that's a uh, non-Cuban cigar. It's actually made in our Dominican factory now in Tobacco Lara de Garcia, where we make our Monte Cristo and our Romeo Julietas. That's a large facility. One of the largest facilities, definitely. I'm uh, waiting for somebody to jump on that. <laughs> <laughs> I well, think well, it's <laughs> the largest cigar factory in the world. Um, I think there's been some that maybe that are close. It's like I said, one or one, are definitely in the Dominican and, and in the world. Uh, you know, yeah, of course, General Davidoff, and then um, I think there's some new facilities in Nicaragua, I believe, that are um, approaching its size. You know, but um, yeah, but they have a lot of empty square footage, and what you have is yeah, stores. yeah. We have, I mean, we have a box plant that's you know making our great boxes, like you know, as we'll see later, in the uh, Romeo by Romeo, Romeo Añejo, and the Romeo Aging Room. Um, so again, that's I think a cool box, the that, aging room. yeah, it's a cool box. Yeah. I think that um, you know, when we produce our own stuff, you know, and we we have the artists and the type of uh, facility to do what we need to do to make it look good. So you're completely integrated? No, we're not completely integrated. I mean, um, mostly though. Uh, well, we buy a lot of our tobacco, Dominican tobacco, from uh, Mendez, yeah. which is um, in Santiago, um, and then we also buy like the Ecuadorian Connecticut. We buy from Oliva, among other people. I don't yeah. know the you know Oliva the we grower, buy from. Not Oliva. Yeah, Oliva the right. grower, correctly. Um, you know, of course, everybody buys you know Nicaraguan tobacco from we you know, know who. <laughs> yeah. Since, uh, you know, Aganor, so a few other people. So again, um, it's a variety. You know, you know, this is again, this is a blend of five different tobaccos. Usually, when you see a cigar, it's usually one or two different blends of different countries. So again, you have you know Ecuadorian Connecticut from Ecuador. You have the Indonesian, you know, which is uh, some people might call it Indonesian Sumatra. This is Indonesian TBN. You have uh, Dominican, Nicaraguan, and Colombian. So you have a true. United Nations of Tobacco wow. when you smoke a cigar. And, and the price points on the cigar is fantastic. Nice. Correct. One thing that we tried to do was, um, you know, we have various price points like most people do in their portfolio. But what we try to do is to make a good, mild cigar at a great price. And I think, and I think um, judging by the sale, because I know you guys do very well yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. And Pennsylvania is a state that has always, has always done pretty well with the, uh, the Vega Fina. We call it the Vega Fina White now. But... Um, it's, it is a good selling cigar for us at a good price point. Price point is roughly between five seventy five to about six seventy five, roughly depending Great on the size point. and shape. Great price point. Well, I think we should get everybody's first impression. Top. Who lit last? I'll go first, even though I lit last. Ooh. I'm always last. Jump right on. Um, it's definitely creamy. It's smooth. Um, nice draw. Mm, that's it for now. There's no question. Rob. I agree with Tia. God help me. It's, <laughs> it's, true, it's creamy. I get a little nutty taste. So, first impression. Scott? Very nice wrapper. Good construction. Um, it's kind of grassy, the flavors up front. Um, I like get grass. And it's, um, I guess there's a, a good amount of seca in it because my mouth is, it's kind of dry. It's kind of a Ooh. dry smoke. Paul? Uh, I think it's right on the money nuts the first flavor that comes mm -hmm. through is nuts and it stays there and it's a very smooth cigar but it's not lacking in flavor it's not a bland cigar at all well i think when you're going up against again this is sold you know overseas i think when you're selling cigars overseas that are strictly you know of uh 
Cuban flavor, or uh, you know, I know Perdomo does well over there. Davidoff makes cigars over there, uh -huh. and they sell overseas. We looked at you know to try to compete and make something that can sell in any market. Um, you know, in the United States, everybody in the last say ten to twelve years, full body flavor, smoke, you know, a stronger smoke, you know. But when you look at the end of the day at sales, you know. Miles cigars, yeah. Still, yeah. Miles cigars, cigars still sell a whole lot more. Right Miles here. cigars still sell right a whole lot more. So again, I think you know when you see the blogs, you know, I know Tia, you do your thing on Facebook, and uh, Rob did your thing on Facebook. Okay. People rate cigars, and a lot of cigars you see rated are always like, you know, a more full, full version of a cigar or a more stronger cigar. I think this cigar kind of uh, is a good morning breakfast coffee cigar yeah. or tea if you like tea if you're from England. Right. You know, but um, again, I think this fills in, fills a void no, for I'm a good price. Right. This fills a good void in price and flavor for a nice mild smoke. Yep. Yeah, I tend to agree with everything that's been said here. I, I, I'm getting the nutty taste, clearly the nutty taste. And, it, and it, it coats the front of the tongue with a nice taste. It has a nice aroma to it. And again, it's certainly a sweet spot in the price point. It's a very affordable scar, which is important in how we rate things around here. Tim, since your your time in the business kind of mirrors our time in the business, yes. uh, always interested when I talk to an old salt, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, old salt doesn't mean you're old. It just means you've been around for a while. Sure, no problem. Salt. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, no, it's certainly meant as a compliment. What changes in the past 20-odd years do you see that kind of stand out in, in, in customers' perception of cigars, their profiles? And, and, and the changeability of cigar, by that I mean, you know, what's here today is gone tomorrow. I mean, the rotation seems to be faster in my, as a retailer, right. faster for us. You guys come out with new models all the time. Well, what do you know? Well, I think, our, I mean, since, I mean, I've been smoking since 1983. And oh you God. look at the brands that have changed, you know, at that time, mm -hmm. you know, Royal Jamaica was really big, Macanudo was really big. Really, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Monte Cruz, um, Monte you know, oh, um, I miss the old I yeah. remember that yeah. one. Yeah. You, you had a lot of different brands that I guess were more worldly, because, you know, right. at that time, they were in Jamaica, some of them were in the Canary yeah. Islands, yeah. Right. you know, different yeah. places. I think the development of the other countries as things has changed, things have changed, like, you know, you have your Dominican tobacco, right. you have your uh, Honduran tobacco, you have, you know, Costa Rican, Brazilian, you know, I think one thing that people have evolved in their education and knowledge of cigars. And companies have also evolved. So right. one thing that I know we've tried to do, you know, General, Davidoff, uh, even the smaller companies, they do a lot of educational modules, you know, like uh, Jose Blanco, he right, does a right. you know, yeah. type of class, you know. So educating the consumer on what they're smoking, on what they're doing, and they've had different trips and involvement of mm -hmm. people and customers to educate these guys, right. you know. so. You know, the consumers are actually as knowledgeable as probably some of the people in the stores. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of us, you know. Yeah. So I see that that in, uh, involvement over the last, you know, definitely five to ten years. But from, say, 20 years ago, I think the cigars and the quality of the cigars have definitely improved because, again, you're not pushing out, you know, five to 600,000 cigars like during you were the doing the boom. Yeah. You know, so I always tell people this. You might not like a blend or you may not like it in your particular flavor profile, but I think a lot of cigars that are being made, especially by everybody, right. there are some great cigars out there. You know, I think there's something out there for everybody. You know, you know? I, I think one of the one of the issues that nobody ever touches on uh, inflation. I think the the inflationary cost of cigars is well below just normal inflation because during the boom, you know, there were a lot of cigars out there in the five to ten dollar range, Correct. which is pretty much the way it is today. So in 20 odd years, inflation really has not lifted. And now taxes have. Correct. And, and and since this show is shown in Delaware and New Jersey, obviously taxes are higher than they are here in Pennsylvania, where there is no tax. So if you subtract out the taxes, cigars really have not gone up. They have gone up, but nowhere near the inflationary cost of other consumable products. So I mean, I don't think people tend to look at those things or think Very about true. them all the time. As a retailer, we do. Because the cars have to be affordable. Because unfortunately, wages haven't kept track. Mm. Yeah, we all know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you speaking personally now? No. <laughs> Remember, I know your boss. Yeah. I, think, I think what people, um, I think some of the misconceptions sometimes is that um, when people, you know, if, when they go to, like, 
the fact until you go to a factory and you see the product being made and so many hands touching it, you know, and the farmer and what he has to go through to produce the tobacco, you know, I think a person gets a more sense of um, I don't want to say ownership, but a more sense of what it takes yeah, to, to do, to do yeah. a cigar. Yeah. You know, it's not just something you know like. You pop it in a hopper and you roll it out. No disrespect to a cigarette smoker or anything like that. But again, it's a art to grow yes. the tobacco, yes, to ferment it, to process it, and then to roll the cigar. Yeah. It's not yeah. breakfast cereal. It's not breakfast cereal. Well, and there's a lot of there's a ton of labor behind it. Yeah. Yes. You know, even it's all I, I learned this recently yeah. that even though the, the tobacco they talk about it, how it ages, it doesn't necessarily just sit there. There's yeah. a lot of times right. you got to work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got to work. work. You got to work. Yeah. 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 You got to work it. I mean, Plus, it's, there's opportunity cost yeah. if it's not being sold, so that has to be factored in. Yeah. It always amazes me how, like this cigar in, in the five, six dollar range. I mean, when you consider, and that's the full retail, that doesn't include a couple of profits along the line. Correct. Uh, it is amazing, again, with all the handwork and the cost of, 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 of maintaining fields and maintaining factories and maintaining so staff and everything. It's amazing you can actually produce a very decent cigar in that price range. Mm -hmm. it, it, it amazes me. You know, well, one thing we try to do is that um, is quality control. I mean, um, you know, we, again, being one of the larger companies, you know, we roll out, we make a lot of cigars, we roll out a lot of cigars. But at the same time, you know, when people smoke our product, you know, like when you smoke, you know, a Romeo, Monte Cristo, Degafina, you know, we want to have that consistency. I mean, yeah. I, you know, our rate of return on products as far as manufacturing not the cost, but on the quality of the product is very high. You know, I mean, I don't know the exact percentage, but it's very, very low. You know. Oh, I can imagine. Very, very, very low. well imagined. And it has to be. I mean, because you know, when you're shipping stuff, especially like this cigar, when you, you know, if you're sending stuff to Europe, you know, you got the tariff taxes oh, you got over all there. Kinds of, yeah. You know, you got all kinds of things, and you know, we want people to smoke them. You know, it's like, oh, well, you know, because you're competing. You know, everybody wants to again try, you know, a Cuban cigar, and we're putting this in the same, you know, environment to sell. Right. You know, we want it to be. Great, you know, not just good, but we want it to be great quality. And you know, even so. with all the tariffs and all the other taxes and state monopolies over there and everything, this still very much competes. Very well, yeah, it competes very well and it's yeah. very well priced. Yeah. And again, there's different variations over there that we've made just for the Spanish market for flavor profiles. Some of those we've had here, like the, you know the Vega Fina Simon, right? You know, uh, different things. Uh, we now have the Vega Fina Nicaraguan, yeah. you know. But at the same time, you know, the white is the largest seller of the brand. Yeah. Well, it does burn well. I'll give it that. Wow. What would you expect, Art? I mean, <laughs> I would expect nothing less. <laughs> nothing less. <laughs> no, I mean, again, this is a um, very for the price that you pay for this cigar is definitely a one. Yeah. Well, would you say that in the in the twenty plus years that you've been in the business, you've seen a lot of shifting in preferences of tobaccos to use for particular purposes? Oh yeah, definitely for sure. I mean, um, you know. You know, when in the 80s, the early, early mid 90s, early 2000s, everything was Dominican. You know, I mean, but if you go back years ago, which used to be part of our company a while back, was uh, Hoya de Nicaragua. Um, you know, that was, if you look at the early issues of Cigar Aficionado, they had a, a lot of high ratings. Yes. Okay. But um, as things have ex expanded, I think everybody goes through a run. And what I mean by a run is like, you know, maybe a golden age, like they say, Renaissance age. Right. So I think, um, you know, Dominican tobacco. You know, when uh, like Mr. Kellner went there, right. uh, Jose Seas used to work for us. Now we have the group of the maestros. You know, those guys, not to say their run is over, but they make great cigars. So I think you shift that a little bit to uh, Honduras. You had guys like, uh, you know, Frank Lanesa, right. you know, the Camacho people, um, you know, Kristen and his family. You know, if I'm forgetting anybody, I'm sorry. You know, but you had people that make great cigars in Honduras. Yeah. So then Honduras had their little run in the late 90s, early 2000s. Oh, and yeah. now, you know... Saying. The uh, Nicaraguan coming tobacco, yeah, Nicaraguan. and I was coming coming back yeah. to Nicaragua, you know, and um, you know they've had a chance to develop things and um, get you know more infrastructure, you know, after the wars, you know, so um, things are definitely swinging their way, you know, it's, it's well, it's been swinging their way for a while, yeah. you know, so it's uh, it's interesting tobacco. to see what uh, you know the, people use. The reason I was asking about that is this cigar has an Indonesian binder. Yes, and if you go back not very long ago. Everybody was using Indonesian tobacco. Correct. And then during the boom, a whole lot of people started using Indonesian wrappers yes. that were under fermented and terrible. Yeah, Correct. they were. And terrible. and it, you know Indonesian suddenly became a bad word. A bad word. Correct. Um, 
And yet, on a world basis, like you were talking about, Indonesian tobacco has been a, a they've been a fundamental player in the business for hundreds of years already. Correct. And well, outside of this country, Indonesian tobacco is used a lot in a lot of uh, other countries in mass market cigars. Um, so it, it's very big over there. Um, when, you know, in different, you know, like the middle, I won't say Middle Eastern, but uh, around the world, I'll just say around the world. Um, so again, you know, these products have been developed, they're still being developed. And there are people that smoke cigars outside of the United States. Huh? It's hard to believe. <laughs> it's hard to believe. We maybe have, you know, we maybe have the biggest market because we're the biggest in the best country in the world, no doubt. But at the same time, there are other people in other markets that use those type of tobaccos. But like you were saying about like the uh, Nicaraguan thing, um, I think that um, you know, even in like Mexican cigars, I think that um, you know, some of the cigars that we get from Alejandro, which are the uh, Tiamo World Selection and different things, right. they've allowed you know, to grow or import these tobaccos over the last, since the NAFTA treaty with Clinton, right. they have these tobaccos in other countries, you know, so they don't have to pay the high tariffs on them, so you can blend different things. So I think that's the most interesting part, you know, what can, ex what can evolve from the different countries, like if Cuba opens up or, you know, Nicaragua, right. different places, you know. I think that's the ultimate end game on what you can do as a company to gather the resources to make a great cigar. The, as long the as you the palette, the more interesting the painting. Right. Correct. Right. You know. I think an interesting fact is, and I think I'm clearly the longest smoker in this uh, tenure in this panel here. I've been smoking since 1962. And what I've seen, especially... <laughs> I wasn't born then. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, I was years before that even. I started in 69. Uh, what was happening in the late 60s, early 70s, Nicaragua was about to take over from Cuba as the world's leader in quality cigars. Okay. And unfortunately, the first Ortega-led Sandinista revolution put a squash to that. Yeah. And it's taken Nicaragua all these years, just basically the last 15 or 20 years, to come back from that. So for 20-odd years, you know, Cuba, which had the lead, galloped with the lead. And now just the last few years, 15 or 20, as Tim said, all these world, worldly tobaccos have been blended and put into cigars that we all take for granted and smoke today. We're running out of time, so we need yeah. to do some quick reviews here. Okay. Uh, pretty straightforward cigar. Um, again, it's I, I am starting to get a little bit of the nuts. I find it uh, grassy, and again, it's it's fairly dry on the palate. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Paul? I agree with the straightforward, but I'm still getting nuts. The flavor's there. It's just smooth, easygoing, mild. It's a very comfortable cigar. I would definitely say the same thing. I, I kind of agree with both of you. I got a little grassy in the beginning, but def I definitely have the, uh, the nut taste. Mm -hmm. And definitely, like you said, straightforward, medium to mild, great burn. Um, good cigar. Gee? Um, Very mild. Um, I agree with Paul. I'm getting like a peanut butter taste, though. I don't know. Like, I'm getting peanut butter. Yeah, I'm getting peanut butter. Jiffer Skippy. Yeah, I was going to ask Jiffer Skippy. You guys asked me last time. I like Jiffy. I like Jiffy. Skippy. Uh, organic. Skippy needs a little nuts in there. I don't like that. Um, I like Skippy because it's crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, what do I say after that? I'll choose. Well, I'll choose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this cigar is, is very <laughs> smooth. Uh, it's creamy. Uh, definitely nutty. And I do get the grassy taste that Scott and uh, Tim get. So. Yeah, it's grass. As for me, I find it very easy to smoke. It draws easy, burns nice, uh, has a lot of sweet, nutty flavor to it. I don't know about the grassy. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm grassy. Grass. I had that in the beginning. I had that in the beginning. Yeah, maybe it, it started out, you know, maybe that way, but it's true. I think it's very mild. Yeah, it's, it's certainly a mild cigar. It's a pleasant cigar. It's, yeah, it's a cigar pleasant. for anybody. It's a mean, nice word. Yeah, it's a very pleasant cigar. Yeah, I mean, cigar. if you were going to, like, I mean, um, one cigar that, you know, people used to use and we still sell, but um, I don't want to say it's taking its place, but one cigar that we use a lot to lead in is this. Yeah. Because I say people, I would always say, you know, Don Diego. Right, but right. I, but, yeah, um, yeah. you know, but I would say, you know, if you're looking at, or Gisper, you yeah. know, but I think yeah, I think cigar. this is more milder than Gisper. It has a lot yeah. to me, a lot more taste. A lot more it does have yeah, a lot more yeah, taste. Yeah, a lot more yeah. taste to it. Like than before, you're saying? No, than the other cigars. Oh, the other cigars. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I'm not sure I've smoked this one before. Yes, you have. I have. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> my I was pleasantly surprised. Oh I'm thinking, which bag did I smoke My scorekeeper and conscious. No, it's a, I was expecting something different. To me, you probably smoked the Nicaraguan. I think it was the... 
It's a bell ringer. Yeah, the Simone is a uh, is is a different animal. The Simone yeah. is a full body. Simone is a full body. It has a uh, Ecuadorian Habana wrapper. Um, it would that was made actually directly to compete really heavy in the Spanish market, which uh. it did. And um, and then we did it here. I think like 2012, 11. Right, something like that. Yeah. And then on a short run, like you know, I think it was maybe fifteen hundred boxes. And then we you know decided to re-release it a few years later after we had more tobacco. Let's put a number on. It. All right, I factor in the price. I give it an eight two five. Wow, Paul, eight five. Eight. D. Eight. My God. Yeah, this this cigar is a little too mild for yeah. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a good cigar. Uh, it's just a little too mild for me. I give it an eight also. Well, as many of you heard me say in the past, you know, I started out life smoking very heavy cigars, mostly <laughs> Cuban heavy cigars, uh, and as I've gotten older, I kind of gone down to the more mild to medium. That doesn't mean I don't recognize a good quality heavy duty cigar. This, this just fills my need. I mean, this is just a bell ringer. I give it a nine. Right. And, and, a, and a lot of it's the price. But having said the price, it's got a great taste. Mm -hmm. I go for taste. What's the calculation? I gave it a nine. All of us. Oh, uh, eight, six, five. Hey, that's good. Stop. <laughs> Is he really uh, making it up? Yes. yes, he's making it up. Oh, he's making it up. Yeah, uh, in my rating, in my rating, really really right. right. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, unfortunately, it's, <laughs> I, this time flies by so fast. It's time to say goodbye. All right, life's too short to smoke cheap cigars. Hi, Mom, happy birthday, Dad. Aww. Smoke often and smoke happy. Cigar, cigar is the best place to go. Yay! Yay! Let's go. All right. Um, smoke sweet. Bye bye for now. Uh, happy birthday, Rob. Scott's dad. Rob. <laughs> Ciao for now, everybody. Happy birthday, Scott's dad. Don't forget our outlet store in the Fairgrounds Mall and Ready. 50 to 90 percent. Drive a little, save a lot, and stay tuned for Glen Loop with an important message. Thank you. This is Glenn Loop, Executive Director at Cigar Rights of America, a grassroots movement designed and in existence to defend your ability to enjoy premium handmade cigars. We're living in a renaissance of cigar making. Some of the greatest blends in the history of this industry are being made right now and they are under attack. Whether it's in your local city hall or your state capitol or in the halls of Congress or with a bureaucracy out of control in Washington, D.C. that wants to regulate this industry virtually out of existence. You need to be a part of the process. You need to join this in the same fashion of the people wanting to defend their ability to enjoy a cocktail during the Prohibition era or your ability to use a farm to go hunting with friends. Just like other great passions that we all share, it seems that the nanny state is alive and well and needs to come to an end. You need to become a cigar voter. Go to cigarrights.org. Go to cigarrights.org right now today and join. For a small fee, we send you two great cigars. You'll be a part of the process, and we can change our destiny.